Hi, my name is Paul Yu, Cloud Native Developer Advocate at Microsoft. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can run your intelligent apps on AKS. We'll start by talking about what makes an app intelligent, and then we'll talk about why you would want to run these apps on a platform like AKS. And then I'll show you a demonstration of a brand new quick start tutorial that we've recently published on the Microsoft Learn site. So what makes an app intelligent? Well, to keep it very simple, when we say intelligent apps, all that means is that your app takes advantage of artificial intelligence to enhance or augment the user experience. Generative AI has exploded onto the scene and organizations, Microsoft included, are taking advantage of these large language models and building capabilities on top of that via co-pilots, chatbots, and whatnot. We're starting to see a paradigm shift where natural language can be effectively used to enhance the user experience. But just because the paradigm is starting to shift, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to start from scratch. By using cloud native architectures, such as microservices, you can easily bolt on these capabilities to your existing apps as well. And there's no other better platform to run your cloud native apps than AKS. AKS offers you a platform that allows you to deploy, scale, secure, and manage all of your cloud native deployments with ease. It offers you a complete end-to-end -end cloud native development experience. AKS also integrates seamlessly with other Azure services, including Azure Key Vault, Azure Storage, Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Entra ID, just to name a few. And AKS is CNCF certified to be Kubernetes conformant. What that means is that all the open source tooling that's available in the Kubernetes ecosystem, well, you can bring that onto your AKS cluster as well. Things like Istio, Kata, Dapper, etc. They can be installed using the open source uh, installer packages, or you can take advantage of some of these AKS add-ons where we will install and manage that for you. Bottom line is that the AKS platform will give you a pretty comprehensive uh, cloud native uh, development experience to host these intelligent apps. Now, let's switch gears just a little bit and talk about our demo scenario and the business problem that it's aiming to solve. With the new quick start, we actually introduce a brand new sample app called AKS Store Demo. This app is taking a little bit of inspiration from another sample app called Red Dog that was actually developed by our GBB friends at Microsoft. And in this particular scenario, it's, it's just a pet supply store where customers can log in, view products, check out and whatnot. But we also have back office capabilities. And the business scenario here is that we want to be able to reduce the cognitive load on some of our employees and be able to lean on open AI models to help us generate product descriptions. And these product descriptions can be generated using the name and keywords. And so I'll show you how we can literally bolt on AI services and enhance the employee experience in this case. Here's a simple view of the application architecture. It all starts with the customer. They visit the storefront where they can view products and add them to the shopping cart. The product catalogs is retrieved from a product microservice, and there's a simple checkout process in the store where orders are submitted to the order service. The order service in turn sends the order to a message queue for later processing. Here in this case, we're using RabbitMQ. From there, we have employees who can perform administrative tasks from the store admin site. The employee manages the product catalog, and so this site is also connected to the product service. The employee also needs to be able to process orders. And so here we have a service called the MakeLine service where it actually retrieves orders from the message queue and saves the order to a persistent database, in this case, MongoDB. Now, the whole point of this quick start is to show you how you can add intelligent capabilities to your existing app and run them on AKS. And so we've done that by literally bolting on an AI service that will use OpenAI and help us generate product descriptions. Here, we're using the AI service written in Python and using the semantic kernel SDK. And the SDK allows us to orchestrate interactions with OpenAI models. And these 
OpenAI models. They could be either on Azure OpenAI service or they could be on OpenAI directly. Now that we have a good idea of how the application is, is constructed, let's deploy this to AKS. So we're gonna follow this quick start guide and deploy our sample app to AKS. To do that, just open up a browser tab and just do a quick search for OpenAI and AKS. And it should be the first item that you see on the list here. Click on the link and it should take you to the document that's titled Deploy an application that uses OpenAI on Azure Kubernetes Service. One of the important things that you need to know is number one, obviously you do have to have an Azure subscription, but number two, you do have to request access to Azure OpenAI if you're going to be using uh, the models on Azure. And so what you can do if you haven't already done this is just go ahead and click that link and fill out this form. It's basically a responsible AI um, checker just to make sure that um, your intent to use the model is all, is all good and whatnot. From there, we have step-by-step -step instructions that actually show you how to deploy this application. And it all starts by creating a resource group, creating the AKS cluster, and deploying the sample manifest to deploy this application that you see here. Now, we're gonna deploy everything that you see in the box except for the two uh, components down below, the OpenAI and the AI service. Let's go ahead and start our process here. So once you have access to Azure OpenAI, what you need to do is go into the Azure portal and just do a search for OpenAI. And you should see the uh, OpenAI logo and then we can actually create a brand new OpenAI service. So what I'll do here is uh, I will create a new resource group, call it my resource group, and I will put it into a region and I'll give it a name. Select the pricing tier, click next, just click through. And after validation, we'll go ahead and create the deployment. All right, so it's completed. Uh, the next thing that we'll need to do is we'll actually need to go into the uh, Azure OpenAI account and we need to deploy our model. What you wanna do is go here to model deployments and then click the manage deployment button. This will open up a, another portal where you can manage your OpenAI models um, and also use the chat playground and whatnot. So we'll create a brand new deployment, select the model. And what we want to use here is the GPT-35 Turbo model. And the model does require a, or the deployment does require a name on Azure OpenAI. And so I'll just use the same exact uh, name as the model. Click create, and we should be good to go there. Now, one thing to note uh, in, a, in the next step, we're gonna need the, the keys and the endpoint. So just make sure that you have this stuff handy. What we'll do next is we'll actually create an AKS cluster in the resource group. Now, rather than creating this in your own terminal, you can literally click, click this green open cloud shell button. What this will do is it'll open up a Azure cloud shell right here in the doc. So you don't have to um, bounce back and forth between web pages. So that's pretty handy. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'll do is I've literally just copied this command, azaks create command to create the AKS cluster. All right, our cluster is deployed. We can actually connect to the cluster now. So let's grab this command to do uh, azaks get credentials. Okay, so now I should be able to run my kubectl get nodes command, and I should be able to see my nodes. You can see they're all ready. Now I can actually deploy the application, and as stated, we're just gonna deploy the top half for now, and then we're going to deploy the AI service um, and have it connected to our open AI model in just a little bit. So scroll down here, and let's grab the uh, YAML manifest to deploy all those resources. And you can see it deployed uh, quite a bit of resources for us. 
and let's just make sure that we can test that so I can go kubectl get deploy we can see that they're starting to come online so we'll just give that a little bit now there are instructions for deploying OpenAI. We've already done that, but it does say that we need to uh, grab the key and the endpoint. And we need that because we're gonna need to fill that in into our YAML manifest. So uh, the AI service deployment manif manifest, um, there's a few pieces of information that is missing here. And so we need the OpenAI deployment name. And then we also need the OpenAI endpoint and the OpenAI API key. If you're doing this um, from OpenAI uh, directly, you can just click this tab for OpenAI and you can see that all you need there is just the API key and the org ID. But we're doing this on Azure, so let me go ahead and copy this YAML manifest and we'll make some edits to it. So uh, we'll create a new manifest called AI service.yaml and let's open that up in our lightweight code editor here and let's paste in the manifest okay so what we need is the deployment name i know what that is that is gpt35 turbo because we gave it the same name and i need the endpoint and the api key so let's go back to the azure portal and I can grab my key, put the key in here, and then I can grab my endpoint, copy that to the clipboard, and then paste that in right here. Okay, now that I saved and closed the file, I can apply that YAML manifest. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So now we have the two services created. Now we should be in a pretty good state. So let's just do a kubectl get pods. We can see that everything is running except for the AI service. So we'll just give that a few seconds to come online. What we can do in the meantime is we can go grab the IP for the store admin site. And we see our admin portal is here and we have a list of products we can also grab the public ip of the storefront just to see what it looks like for our end users and this is what the storefront looks like for customers so they can actually come down here um, browse products and add them to the shopping cart and submit the order just like that now from a admin perspective we can actually hit the add product button over here and then we can give the product a name because remember it requires the name and keywords to generate the description and so let's just do this um, rough and tough chew toy and let's give it a price and let's give us some product keywords so it's a dog it's a chew toy notice here we have this button called ask open ai what this will do is it will call out to the ai service and call out to the uh, open ai chat completion endpoint so we'll go ahead and ask it there we go so it returned back with this nice well-crafted product description and we can hit save save the product we can see it's here and if we go back to the list we see we have a brand new product here and if i reload my product page over here you can see that we have a brand new product available now that you've seen a simple yet common use case of adding intelligent capabilities to your app it's your turn to explore a bit more here are some resources that i think you should check out next number one go try the quick start for yourself Go through the doc and let us know if you have any questions or comments about it. If you're not really familiar with Kubernetes, no worries. Check out the Kubernetes learning path that we have. It's a curated list of resources that you should check out that will, well, 
put you on the right path. I'd also like to note that we will be hosting a webinar in the month of August at the Microsoft Reactor, where we'll walk you through how you can deploy your apps to Azure Container Apps and Azure Kubernetes Service. If you are familiar with deploying your applications to containerized services already, and you just want to figure out what more can you do with, let's say, a semantic kernel SDK, check out this blog post, um, the semantic kernel, what it is and why it matters, because there's a lot more than you can do uh, with this sort of technology and the SDK. There's things that you can do like embedded search, using vector databases and, and whatnot. And also we have a couple of other blog posts that's floating out there around how to deploy Azure OpenAI and ChatGPT uh, on AKS using both Terraform and Bicep. So be sure to uh, check those two things out. Hopefully this is enough to get you started. And if you have any questions, just feel free, reach out either in GitHub issues or on Twitter and let us know. I can't wait to see what you build next. Thanks.